students this is my great honor to introduce a remarkable individual who embodies strength resilience and determination she is none other than bhavna tokekar she is 52 years old and she is also mother of two children and she is a powerlifting champion bhavna ma'am has won four gold medals in open asian powerlifting championships held in russia her remarkable achievements are testament to her dedication and hard work bhavna ma'am's story is an inspiration to many showing that age is just a number and with determination and perseverance anyone can achieve greatness please join me in welcoming the incredible bhavna tokekar ma'am all of you we will also welcome our esteemed guest rishi manuja sir who is a coach and also a nutritionist please come on to the dais we would like to welcome mr vijay sir who is the ceo of volente group good afternoon everybody thank you thank you for having me here thank you mr vijay and uh, it was a very short notice which uh, uh, you all have gathered here and uh, what do i tell about myself i am a 52 year old power lifter mother of two grown up kids almost uh, the age of uh, your age 25 and 21 uh, and uh, i'm still competing i just uh, won a national uh, gold here in hyderabad that's that's the reason i'm here i was here for a championship and uh, Uh, that's when i gave a uh, message to mr vijay and uh, so we are here uh, i started my uh, strength training journey pretty young at the age of 40 and uh, <laughs> so uh, at the age of 40 most of uh, men and women uh, think of retiring and uh, i did it completely opposite I started my professional journey at the age of 47 and uh, strength training before that I started at the age of 40 so it's been 12 years since I have been strength training regu regularly and uh, competing since last 5 6 years now and uh, that's it <laughs> uh, anything you want to ask or any questions or about me or about anything i at the age of 52 i still train uh, uh, i don't know how ma how many people here know strength training or weight lifting or weight training uh, i train for 3 hours and it's uh, lifting pretty heavy weights uh, almost 1500 uh, kg in total almost every day um, at least that's minimum in total so uh, and uh, it's not that uh, i am not looking after my house i am a homemaker also so looking after my house and plus uh, having this professional journey okay. uh i just want to ask you why uh, why are you all here in this institution studying for upsc right so uh, what motivates you to study for 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours non stop at times it might be frustrating it might be boring your uh, uh, classmates or your friends might be uh, enjoying life and you are here studying in a small room at times without ac um, having bad food what it is that uh, makes you do all this i want to ask you all anyone can answer that or any of you can answer that so that is the that is the thing which uh, makes you do all these things right so it same with me the ultimate goal is uh, to have uh, something for myself which i can be proud of at the age of 80 or 90 or till i survive that okay i did something which was uh, not a uh, regular thing apart from the regular life i had a life which was probably probably a little different very few people do it uh, like there are very few who become ias or ips or upsc who who can clear upsc there are very few people 
who and there's whole lot of people who attempt but very few clear right so uh, it's the same thing i also do it for my passion and i dedicate uh, so much of hard work and uh, so much goes into it um, being from having homemade food every day which most of us don't like we like to party or we like to have a uh, food which is uh, tasty might not be healthy so uh, it's same here but then uh, curbing that and uh, giving it all is uh, because the ultimate goal is to figure out somewhere a small part which where i made a difference or a uh, few people would be inspired to take up something very different uh, very new to have a life or to do something which they want to um, they love or they are passionate about so that is the reason why yes <laughs> see if you listen to the society they will not let you even walk out of the house right <laughs> it is uh, you should have the courage to follow your heart your dreams uh, it was not easy for me it's no, never easy for anyone for male female if you want to do something different from a regular stuff or you want to follow your heart even if it might be a regular stuff probably your parents or your society might not agree with your dreams or believe in your dreams but ultimately it is up to you ultimately after all those challenges all those taunts or all those things which people say or they might say you you won't be able to make it or anything in the world i have heard the nastiest comments but i'm still standing here doing it with the same intensity why because i never cared it hurts of course it hurts at the end of the day you cry you cry it out that's perfectly okay but ultimately they are not going to uh, uh, i mean say things which would change your life you want to live your life the way you want to live right if you listen to them and change your life they will be living your life they are ruling your life if you want to uh, do that it's perfect but if you want to have a life of your own ultimately at the end of the day you want to smile look in the mirror and smile and say oh okay i did it i did something which i like it that's it that's what you should do i feel you should have a smile on your face every night that okay i am doing something which i like i love in spite of everything like three months back i was down with typhoid uh, i had lot of other health issues but i still came here i gave it all in spite of uh, i know it's not uh, so healthy to say ki don't follow doctor's instructions but i know my body um, i gave uh, myself a time to recover and uh, i was back to training and i'm here i was here to compete so <laughs> it's up to you what and how much you have to give your uh, dreams uh why only powerlifting because i have i had been strength training uh, since last 6 uh, 7 years before i started powerlifting and uh, powerlifting was something very similar to uh, what i was doing in the gym what i was um, i mean the way i was exercising it was very similar to what uh, powerlifting is so and uh, the federation from which i play they give an uh, option to play drug free we have a tested and non tested categories also and uh, i didn't want to indulge myself into taking performance enhancements or anything which will affect my body so that is the reason why i chose this federation that is the reason i chose powerlifting which was similar to what i i had been doing i had been training have you ever tried to quit oh no <laughs> that's never <laughs> uh in fact mr vijay just asked me what are your five year plans and i told him i'll uh, be doing the same thing might be more uh, <laughs> but i'll never quit and never quit not just into uh, power lifting but whatever i take up i have this uh, in me that whatever i take up 
I have never quit. I give it my all. I gave my 100%. Even if I fail, I'll, I'll get up. I'll try again. And that is what my sport also teaches. Not every day you will win. Not every day you will lose. But uh, when you lose, next day you cry it out. <laughs> you uh, have your um, sad days. But next day you get up, you train again. You go for the championship again. So quitting is never in my dictionary. Have you ever faced any politics in the sport? So how did you face it? It's everywhere. Politics, oh, <laughs> you are an uh, UPSC aspirant. Politics will be your life, ultimately. <laughs> National? Swimmer. Swimmer, okay. Mm -hmm. No, personally, I have never faced. But what I feel is, be so good in whatever you are doing that nothing will pull you down. I mean, politics, yes, there will be people who will pull you down. There will be people who will try and um, curtail your journey or um, do some nasty things. I know there are a lot of things which goes into sports. But uh, be so good that they have to see you. They have to take you in the team or that is the only way out. And it will be everywhere. I mean, if today you are UPSC aspirants, tomorrow if you become an IAS or IPS or it will be there, right? You have to be so good in what you're doing that they just cannot ignore you. That is the only way. PR of what? I just benched 80 kgs uh, and my deadlift is 135 kgs and uh, my squat is 102.5. My squat is my weakest. Thank you. I was always a sports person. I had been a table tennis player during my younger days. And uh, sports came by, uh, at the later age, uh, lifting came by default actually. I was into running half marathons. And uh, the trainer there must have seen some dedication in me. And uh, he asked me to try out weights. And like all of us or most of us, uh, I was also hesitant to lift weights at the age of 40 and I had two young kids that time and I was like, uh, no, I can't do this. What if I, if I break my bone or uh, do something which might have a effect on my kids. So, uh, I was also not too open initially on the first day, but then he convinced me to lift small weights earlier and then it was the moment I touched the bar, it was, I knew that this is what I wanted. What is your goal? Till now, have you actually achieved it up now? What is your goal? Biggest goal. Uh, my next target is already set. It's every championship, my next target is already set. I have four, uh, five world records in my name uh, today. Uh, I'm aiming that uh, in April when I go to Poland, I break my own records. That is what I aim for. And one more thing what I want to say is it's all the competition is always with yourself, not with anybody. Like you all are here. Um, you don't have to compete against each other. You have to compete against your yesterday's performance. Yesterday you studied that much or you cleared that exam or something. You have to make it not that he is doing better or somebody else is doing better. Your previous marks should be your competition. That's it. Daily? I look in the mirror. That is my uh, motivation. <laughs> if I look in the mirror and I smile and I say, okay, uh, I have to look better. I have to train better. I have to lift better. That is my motivation. That's what I said. You have to compete with yourself. You are yesterday. Uh, you have to compete with your yesterday. Your tomorrow has to be better than your yesterday. So you have to always compete. So why I am saying this, uh, there will be no jealousy after that. You have to compete with yourself. You have to be better than yourself. You cannot be better than anybody else. If you are better than uh, somebody today, uh, that's it. 
that's that's where your limit is right you have to be better than yourself not with somebody what if i have to the journey it's like uh, when you have to go for a party and you have uh, uh, an exam tomorrow right or uh, there are some other commitments at home uh, what would you, what would you choose either you will balance both uh, if your if your uh, parents have said something that you have to be here and then you go, can go for a party or uh, don't you manage that you do because what is more important the partying is more important so <laughs> for me training is more important and uh, if i have to train i cannot leave my um, house on uh, okay okay um, somebody else will look after my house or my kids or uh, whatever um, and i'll just train no it do- doesn't happen like that in life you have to balance things and i i um, i don't want uh, to be just a power lifter i want to be a mother i want to be a wife i want to be friend um i want to enjoy my life i want to party so i do everything if i have to party at 8 i'll uh, train uh, four hours before that i'll shift my training schedule before that so i I'll, i'll train and after that i'll go and uh, dance my uh, <laughs> on that night thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you for your insights now we request rishi sir to give our students few insights on healthy lifestyle and nutrition during preparation Good evening, everyone. I see a lot of beautiful faces, smiling, and uh, a little chaotic in mind. What to do about the life? How you pass the exams, and a lot of things probably going on right now. And in the middle of this chaos, we came apart uh, <laughs> with the honor, uh, Mr. Vijay, uh, my athlete, my friend, Vijay Bhavna. Uh, we come in and we bash your party right so i'm just here uh, i i feel really honored and privileged to be here um being from the nutritional background and being from the health and fitness industry uh, i know the kind of struggles that uh, people in general face especially the students and first of all please uh, forgive me for my sore throat i've been shouting a lot on the bench press event <laughs> so <clears throat> i know a lot of people struggle for their daily intake of nutrition and uh, it's not easily accessible out there a lot of people don't know about lifestyle very few i see a few guys having some muscles some swimmers around and uh, some cute guys around in the front row a lot of people try their best to attain into good physiques but then at the end of the day it's difficult right so by the way if if i may ask how many of you are into fitness can you just raise your hands nobody's into fitness come on come on guys raise your hands if you are into fitness you are witnessing the world's best athlete right in front of you you need to show some cheer right all right i can see only three hands right now okay four hands five hands six hands seven hands all right a couple of you are there into fitness see being there into fitness is nothing that you have to be in the gym every single day or you have to make it big like you are struggling to exercise or doing various uh, deadlifts and squats and other technical detail lifts it's in general to keep yourself fit mentally and physically to execute whatever you guys want to execute right as of now you are executing a journey uh you are progressing the journey to become an administration uh, administration head right somebody from the uh country who's going to take decisions who's going to lead uh, certain aspects of the country in various domains and if you are not fit mentally if you are not able to uh, have that kind of mindset uh, without keeping yourself physically healthy it's uh, it comes to you know a stall at some point of the time mr vijay being himself being an entrepreneur he still make sure that he is going to the gym 
<laughs> he follows a healthy routine so that also um you know very subtly answers us all that we all need it no matter if we want to agree to it or if you want to deny it or if you want to say that you don't have time but you need to have a little time dedicated for that even if it is like a half an hour a day or an hour a day that's probably all it requires so um, a few tips that i think i can give you as a nutrition professional and fitness professional which can actually help you elevate your lifestyles and help you prepare uh, for your exams better is um, giving you some uh, food oriented options that can be instrumental in your journeys so i believe a lot of people consume uh, food late at night because you guys are probably learning and reading right some of gig some of those giggles tells me that i'm saying right how many of you guys consume food late at night a lot of us do it that's fine you can raise your hands if you want to those back benches are my favorite now <laughs> So a lot of us consume food late at night, right? And uh, when you consume anything late at night, especially if it is high on carbohydrates, like anything which is sweet in nature or any processed food, anything which is uh, very high on glycemic index, these kind of food intake uh, takes a lot of time uh, to get induced, and uh, the blood sugar level is usually on the higher side, which kind of makes you slightly sleepy, comfortable, grumpy next morning. and also it's very easy for you to overload those calories no matter how much you accept it or deny it once you open a packet of chips it's going to stop only when it's empty right because these foods are designed to make you get into that stream and not to get out of it once you start indulging into uh, any sort of snacking you will only end up when the snacks are gone or else it's going to be very difficult for you to just have one or two chip and avoid the rest of it it's not going to happen like that instead focus on having something which is high in fat and high in protein by that i don't mean pizzas and burgers because they are high in fat right uh, high fatty uh, good fats which come from essential nutrients which come from nuts which come from some sort of non vegetarian food items like fish um a lot of uh, non veg in general when we see non veg in specifically in hyderabad i've seen people having spicy food and like they need lip smacking food like biryanis and everything that's the staple around here right but then um uh when it comes to non veg in food items if you keep the spices low i know you're going to hate me for this but if you keep the spices low and put oil low and you try to consume it as it is it's going to help you in many many ways for all the non vegetarians for the vegetarians uh sticking to food items like paneer soy some to some extent soy products and uh, nuts uh, they are especially very good options for your snacking and you know uh, other small elements like almonds uh fox nuts jisko hum makhana kehte hain and in general language um some fruits as well so fruits are also great way uh, to you know uh, eliminate the sugar cravings and to some extent some dark chocolates they can also help you reduce cravings reduce anxiety and probably help you go to sleep in a better situation so um avoiding a lot of sugars when you consume when you when you're studying that's going to be one of the best things that you can do for yourself if you are into tea coffee if you are tea toddler whatever if you can reduce your sugar intake that's uh, one of the best things that you can do for your brain to consume uh, better nutrition keep yourself hydrated at all times there is no stopping on that try to make sure that you consume at least 2 to 3 liters of water a day and uh, try to maintain that lifestyle in a manner which really helps you lead a good student life and then later on uh, you do become whatever you aspire to be okay thank you so much guys i hope it helps thank you sir thank you for your tips now we request vijay sir to give few insights 
Hi, everybody. It's five o'clock already, so uh, sleepy now. Um, now, the reason, actually, first of all, I was introduced as CEO of Volante Technologies, which is true, but I'm also a board member of this uh, Flight Slams, actually. So, just wanted to let you know. Um, I, I don't see you guys that much, but a lot of work that goes beyond or behind the scenes, I'm there. Um, about uh, me, I'll stop talking, but first of all, congratulations for all of you first, because you thought you could do something different. And you're on your own, not following the regular path of many, many, many millions of people. Okay. You are already differentiating yourselves from the rest of the crowd. So congratulations on that one. Okay. It's a huge step to take that. Because we were talking about her son, and even she has a fear that if he takes up this UPSC attempt, will he be wasting his time? Okay, that's very natural for all of us to think. But I don't think you're wasting your time. I'm sure you thought about it already. And you know all of you will get selected if you think that you're not wasting your time here, right? And I want you guys to do it. It's, it's very important for you to do it. The reason why I asked her to come here and talk about it is, there's nothing impossible in life. Whatever age, whatever time frame, whatever you decide, you can do it. I just wanted her to motivate you guys. She has started this much later in her years after two kids who are teenagers. And she has proved to the world that she can do anything that she wanted to. If somebody else can do it, you can also do it. And that's the reason why I wanted her to come and talk here. Because I want you guys to get motivated. Because already you're halfway there. It just needs a little more push to make it happen. And I'll be very happy if I can see all of you succeed in the goal you're looking for. Okay. So please let me know any questions you have. But uh, I don't want to talk too much. Um, because I can talk forever. Having nothing, I can talk forever. So I have the talent of saying something which has no value at all, but keep entertaining people. So please tell me if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Otherwise, um, we'll call it a day. If uh, somebody tries and uh, makes an effort to join UPSC, but he does not make it or she does not make it, uh, should they have a second plan for themselves? No, it's, it's a very good question. Always we talk about plan B, right? For me, I don't have a plan B. Either I do or die. That's all it is for me personally. So, thing is, if you are working so hard and if you are learning so much, nothing can hurt you. You will always get a job. That's very simple actually. And my view, you will always, you will all be creating jobs actually in my view, because you learned so much in these two years that you can literally rule the country. You know, that much of knowledge you have. So why, what are you worried about? You, know, you can do it. So there's no question of having a plan B. Don't worry about it. That will fall in place if it doesn't happen. If this doesn't happen, the plan will B will automatically kick in. But don't plan for the plan B. Okay. So only plan, one plan, that's it. There's over focus and just get it done. I'll tell you, we started the company in 2001. We said we are going to build to last, no matter what. We didn't raise the money, we didn't have salaries for three years. We couldn't, we couldn't afford even to send my uh, daughter to a proper daycare. It didn't really matter to me. Yeah, my wife complains about it, but that's okay. <laughs> um, we, we were focused on getting something much more value, creation. And uh, today it's like 23 years, but more than 23 years. I keep saying this to my employees that um, I want everybody to retire there in the company. That means literally we want to build something to last. And we don't have a plan B. If what happens if this, on, this startup doesn't work, we didn't have a plan. So we knew it's going to be succeeding, we just need to have patience. 
and today we are able to process trillions of dollars through our software, controlling pretty much every major bank in the world. And to be very proud that all this software that's being built is in India. So the country would run small, there's no plan to win, just have only one plan that you have to win. How many think how many of you think that will make it? <laughs> Come on guys, I want all hands. Otherwise, don't waste your time. You know, just say yes, I want to be. Good. No, I'm sure you will be. I'm sure you will be. Um, and you are very good institute you are in. I'm sure they will all train you properly. But dedicate yourselves. This is the best time of your life. Don't, don't hesitate to work hard. And one thing, I, one of my managers in the first job I joined told me that if I don't ask, that means I'm scared of learning. So don't get scared of learning. Ask more questions and learn more. Okay. So it's a beautiful world out there. You work hard, the world will reward you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your patience uh, for answering questions. Uh, we would like to call upon Venkateshwar sir, Karthik sir, and Ramohan sir for felicitation. Thank you again for sharing your knowledge and making our event successful. So one thing especially I, have to, I want to tell you about our board member uh, Vijay sir. Uh, sir worked in US almost 20 years. He built 2500 crores company uh, net worth. So literally whomever they done almost all the starting stage and including ma'am and everyone they achieved something. So I'm expecting to everyone whatever the session is happened you learn something from this session. And thank you for attending each and everyone. Thank you.